Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. Today is the second Sunday of Lent, and the Gospel proclaims that on the mountain, Jesus was transfigured before Peter, James, and John. The three disciples saw Jesus in His glory, accompanied by Moses and Elijah. Then a bright cloud cast a shadow over them, and a voice declared, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him. God confirmed the identity of Jesus, His beloved Son, and instructed Peter, James, and John to listen to Him. Friends, the transfiguration is a revelation. Death would definitely be upon Jesus. But the disciples must not lose heart, for His death is the path to the resurrection and the transformation of the world. As we continue our Lenten journey, may we have the courage to walk with Jesus in His passion and death, so that we may all be transformed. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The Word of the Lord. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the trustworthy he loves justice and right of oh, the kindness of the lord the earth is full lord let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in of the Lord are upon those who fear Him, upon those who hope for His kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of As we place our trust in you.
A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The Word of the Lord. The Path to Transfiguration. Our gospel for this Sunday is the all too familiar episode in the life of Jesus being transfigured before Peter, James, and John. It is a mystery that we need to enter the way the three disciples were invited by Jesus to enter so that we could also experience our own transfiguration as individual believers, as human beings, and as a human family. In the first reading, we see God's offer of a transfigured life to Abraham. We know the, the background. Abraham, married to Sarah, had no children. And at the time, they were considered almost cursed, almost abandoned by God. For not having children was a sign that a person has not found favor with God. God has been withholding blessings and graces. For God is the God of life. And if you don't have children, then for them, God refuses to make you an instrument of God's life and God's continuing creation. But God promises a transfiguration to Abraham. God will bless him. God will make of him a great nation. All the other nations will recognize Abraham's nation. And the mention of the name of Abraham will remind people of God and God's blessing. Wow, what a transfiguration from being childless to being the greatest of nations, to being cursed, to being a blessing, a transfiguration. It is God's work. It is God's promise. It is God's offer. But Abraham must agree on something. He will have to leave his homeland. He must leave everything that was familiar to him, everything sacred to him, his father's house. He would have to journey into almost solitude, into uprootedness. He will journey in the uncertainty of a place and a future which only God knows and God will indicate to him. Transfiguration will come if Abraham will take that dark journey, that journey of faith, that journey of abandon to the Father, that journey with much pain, but every pain becoming a sigh of hope in God. That journey towards transfiguration. St. Paul means the same thing. He tells us that we have been transfigured already in Jesus Christ. Thanks to Jesus' coming, 
thanks to Jesus' death and resurrection. Thanks to Jesus' appearing and being uh, appearing to us and being with us, we have new life. We are called to that holy life, that transfigured life, from sinfulness to holiness, thanks to Jesus. But that transfiguration into a holy life means, like Abraham, we also have to take a journey. And it is the journey of living the gospel, especially bearing our share of the hardship in living and proclaiming the gospel. The transfiguration into a holy life would require a journey where the gospel, which is our life, will also bring to us pain, rejection, persecution, insults. And like St. Paul, even death. So St. Paul does not hide it. The transfiguration comes when we are ready to embark on a journey that in involves embracing the hardships and also the consolation, but the hardships associated with proclaiming the gospel. No transfiguration into a holy life without it. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us look intently on this path to transfiguration. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew Jesus took Peter, James, and John his brother and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Path to Transfiguration. As I said at the beginning of our reflection, for so this Sunday, our Gospel is about the transfiguration of our Lord on the holy mountain before three of His disciples. The transfiguration, which we see also in the experience of so many people. In the first reading, the transfiguration of Abraham, from being a childless man to being a father of, of a great nation, from being insulted and even cursed by people to being a blessing. The transfiguration is in God's hands, but Abraham must agree to take a journey, to leave his homeland, to leave his father, and to enter the darkness of being led by God to a place that God will indicate. 
without that capacity to journey with pain and darkness, there is no transfiguration in the life of Abraham. In the second reading, St. Paul tells Timothy that all of us have already been given the foretaste of transfiguration through the salvation and the offer of holy life through Jesus. But will we be ready to embrace our share of the hardships for the gospel? For we cannot claim only the transfiguration that comes from the good news of Jesus without also making this journey which entails suffering, even persecution, on account of the gospel. In the gospel, Jesus, before the transfiguration, had openly told his disciples that he was a Messiah that would be arrested, humiliated, put to death. But then he will also rise on the third day. This has jolted the faith and the peace of mind of the disciples. Many of them probably were not only scandalized, many of them probably thought that they had been wasting their time following a Messiah that would be a defeatist in the end, not a triumphant Messiah. And how would the crucified Messiah effect any change or transformation in the world? They must have entertained these thoughts. And so, Jesus, by some mysterious act, invited his closest disciples, Peter, James, and John, to the mountain. And before him, before them, he was transfigured. He became radiant. He possessed, while on that mountain, he possessed heavenly glory, the splendor that only God could give. Moses and Elijah were with him, talking about his journey, talking about his passage. Then a voice from heaven declared who Jesus was, the Son of God. And God tells not only the three disciples, but all of us now, listen to him, listen to him. Now that transfiguration of Jesus before Peter and James and John was a testament. This Jesus, whose body became glorious, is the same Jesus who will be later on crucified. Let us not think that the transfiguration is a way of minimizing the journey to Calvary. No. The transfiguration is not a way to trick the disciples into continuing to follow Jesus and uh, as though telling them, don't worry, the crucifixion is, is not real, you know. It's not real. It is just a pretension. No, that's not the type of journey that Jesus will take, a journey that becomes a transfiguration. In fact, Peter said, wow, let us just stay here in this glorious state. Let us build three tents, no? And we will be here, and we can spend the rest of our lives just basking on the splendor of this, of this glory, heavenly glory. But it ended. And then Jesus told them to join him to get down from the mountain and to continue their journey towards Calvary. 
And the three disciples should not talk about what they have seen until the resurrection of Jesus. So that means, Peter, James, and John, you have seen my transfiguration, but that transfiguration into glory will happen with the journey to Calvary and wait for that journey to finish and come with me. The same experience of Abraham, the same experience of each one of us, true transfiguration through the salvation of Jesus will happen if we join him on the journey which is painful, which is dark, but filled with hope and faith in God, the journey called Calvary. And only those who are willing to do that with Jesus and with neighbors will experience true transfiguration. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Last week, we began our Lenten reflection on reuniting with God who sees, sends, and saves us. How was your remembering of God's familiarity with you and your familiarity with Him? We hope that as you went through your daily life with prayer and reflection last week, you were able to recognize God's movements, reminding you that indeed you belong to Him. And because you are His, God sees and knows you. He is not a distant God. He is with you. He sees your bones and knows your days, as the psalmist says. Today, let us direct our reflection towards a particular way that God hopes to see us. Let us read a part of God's conversation with Cain. This line teaches us a couple of things about God and the way He sees Cain and Abel and each of us. First, by asking Cain where Abel was, God was revealing something about Himself. He is not a condemning God. He dialogues with us, and hopefully we could be honest and open to Him. The other thing is this. Just as God saw Cain as a keeper of Abel, so does he see us as a keeper of each other. Let us try to respond to God's question and enter into a dialogue with him. Where is my brother? Where is my sister? Knowing where a brother or a sister is is another step towards reuniting with God. It is one of the things we could bring up to God. What have I done for my brother or sister? As we reflect on our relationship with our brothers and sisters in the context of our nuclear family, let us also consider our relationship with our brothers and sisters in the church. On the cross, Jesus expanded his family by entrusting his mother and his beloved disciple to each other. Where are our brothers and sisters now? Do they remain close to the community? Or have they distanced themselves from the church? What have we done for them? We hope we could find them. We hope we could reunite with God by caring for them. 
Let us pray for the grace of courage and humility to seek out our brothers and sisters, whether from our nuclear family or from the church. May we see ourselves the way God sees us, a keeper of one another. Amen. We have prepared deflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, why is the passion of Jesus and our sharing in it needed for renewing humanity? Bakit kailangan para sa pagpapanibago ng sangkatauhan ng pagpakasakit ni Jesus at ang ating pakikiisa dito? The second point is, how can we effectively communicate the transforming power of Jesus' passion and death. Papano natin maibabahagi ang pagbabago na taglay ng pagpapakasakit at kamatayan ni Jesus. Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.